And then we get to Bill Gross's article. Actually, uh, I was going to bring it. I was going to bring Bill Gross's previous art. Uh, this is his March article, which I just noticed today. Uh, I was trying to print the February. You might go on www.pimco.com. Uh, Bill Gross, who is totally cognizant of all these issues, manages what's the number? Eight hundred billion, the largest manager of, of money in in the world, um, and he earned it. <laughs> he started out very small. And his success and being ahead of the crowd. And when you manage that much money, you've really got to be ahead of the crowd. Um, or, or else you're just, run, you know, you got you to gotta get there when you got to buy assets that no one else wants to be able to have a high total return. <laughs> Basically, if you get to the very bottom, uh, which is a repetition of what he said in the previous article, and actually he was clear about it, you, you go to the bottom of the next to last page. Um, <coughs> Uh, last paragraph. Investors should obviously focus on those sovereigns where fundamentals promise low, lower credit or inflationary risk. Germany and Canada are among those at the top of the list. So basically, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a country running a trade surplus, which is Germany, that has a fiscal surplus, if possible, has rule of law, and that's those are the main variables you look for. Then there's a, another group that you look for, and, and the question is, which among the emerging nations are you willing uh, to, in some sense, I guess, think that you're rolling the dice? Um, but what this also is a gross a contribution. He asks the question, who's riskier? This is government debt as a percentage of GDP in the advanced countries approaching over 100%. And this is government debt relative to GDP in the developing countries, like 40%. And from his perspective, um, they're mining, shall we say, the developing countries for opportunities. That's where they are. And there's probably no better time to make a switch than right now when the treasury and the dollar are so overpriced. Even last, and the only reason we're overpriced is the flight to quality from, from Europe, where last year when we didn't have that, the terms of trade of getting out of America was a lot worse. So that's kind of where I come out. Now, what are the chances of which, which of these meltdown scenarios? Um, I, I would think with the current administration in place, I think the most likely is capital flight. Um, I, I think because of all the regulatory funneling of money toward the treasuries, we're going to be able to continue to fund the treasury for a, long, for a lot longer than sensible money will care to voluntarily exit. I think that would be the... That would be the exit, I would think. So meanwhile, we're in this terribly uh, troubling times. We have this terrible Hobson choice. Uh, do we save the economy, or do we save our long-term fiscal <laughs> selves? If we spend less, the economy will go down. But we might save ourselves, but I don't <laughs> think this administration will. So that's a terrible choice. Hobson's choice is which of two bad alternatives do you prefer? Um, if you save the economy, you're going to, you know, with stimulus, you accelerate the day of, of, the, of the debt uh, uh, d debacle. If, on the other hand, you rein in spending now, uh, we have more room on the debt debacle, but the economy goes further wobbly. And the multiplier is still positive. It's not negative, but it's very <coughs> weak. So basically, that's our terrible choice that we're facing. And I guess as investors, the real choice you're facing is which currency would you rather be in? I think is, is my outcome on this. Um, okay, I'm. <laughs> well, when the euro gets down about 120, I'd like Germany, I'd be like Canada now. Uh, uh, one of the, you know, you, you really got to, you, you need a specialist like Bill Gross who's taking his 800 billion offshore. That's all they do. It, 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 you know, they, they started out as onshore investors. They ended up being offshore investors. Your debt, if you don't have the cash to pay your, 